I can't prove it, but I suspect the team at Rankin Bass heard this production because there are a few things they seem to have taken from this that don't seem to appear in the book. Unless they were in an edition that I've never come across. First off, they abridged the second sentence of the book nearly the same way. Okay, so here's the line in the book. Not a nasty, dirty wet hole filled with the ends of worms and an oozy smell, nor yet a dry, bare, sandy hole with nothing in it to sit down on or to eat. It was a hobbit hole, and that means comfort. And here's how Bilbo says that line in the radio show. It, uh, uh, not a nasty, dirty wet hole, nor yet a dry, sandy bare hole. My hole was a hobbit hole, and that means comfort. And here's how Gandalf says that line in the cartoon. Not a nasty, dirty wet hole, nor a dry, bare, sandy hole. It was a hobbit hole, and that means comfort. Okay, I know that doesn't prove anything. In both cases, they just removed the most superfluous clauses in the sentences. Two adapters could have come to the same decision independently. Similarly to how two adaptations could have independently decided to drop Bilbo's first visit to the Sleeping Smaug before their riddle-filled conversation. The one Balin came halfway down the tunnel for. However, the stronger evidence is the stuff both adaptations add. Namely, Bilbo asking what runes are. Runes, Gunnar. Runes are the ancient letters of a half-forgotten language. Whatever are runes? Ancient writing. And Bilbo being especially concerned with one specific line in his contract. Funeral expenses to be defrayed by us. Funeral expenses? Funeral expenses. Again, not proof. Both of these are perfectly in character for Bilbo and make a lot of sense. It's very possibly a coincidence that both scriptwriters made these additions. But I wouldn't be surprised if Romeo Muller listened to this while writing, and if so, this is the basis of all Hobbit adaptations that came after, and for me, it's still the one to beat. Ooh.